Hey guys, today I'm super excited because we're going to continue with our video series on how to build a walk-in shower using the KBRS shower slope. Remember, this is a very affordable system. In our prior video, which you can watch right here, we show you how to choose the shower slope for your particular project. Today, we're going to share how to install the drain, the shower slope pan, the curb, and the cement board. And we'll show you how to customize the system by cutting the pan and the curb to size. Okay, so now I'm gonna drill a four and a half inch hole. That's what you wanna be able to use to drill for this standard OD drain assembly. A jigsaw can also be used to cut out this four and a half inch hole. You don't necessarily need to use a hole saw, but it definitely makes it easier. The reason you wanna do that is because these little nubs need to be in recessed into the subfloor. So this is, say if this, this is our four and a half inch hole, you want to be able to see these guys recessing into the plywood. Now the KBRS pan is also wanting this flange to be above the subfloor. So as long as you get these little nubs down into the plywood, then this will sit up the proper three eighths of an inch uh, that they're requiring for the pan. So once you have, I don't know if you can see that, once you have uh, this flush to the, the subfloor, it'll be three eighths of an inch, it'll be sitting up above. So now it's just a matter of measuring to your drain piece here. You just set your drain in there and you can measure down to your bottom of your fitting. So we got, about an inch and seven eighths. And then at this point, you're ready to go ahead and glue this. Let's get some primer on our fitting. And then I'm also just using some of this shower seal uh, that comes with the kit. And I'm just gonna put a bead of this on the bottom of this so that this secures to the plywood. Steve is applying the PVC cement to all the pipe fittings that were primed. You gotta use the purple primer first, then apply the cement afterward and hold the fitting in place. So again, on this little fitting inside the drain and then pushing the drain down into the pipe. You should be good to go. Hold that for a few minutes. So this flange wants to move up a little bit. I'm just gonna put a screw to allow that polyurethane. I'm just pinching the edge of this just to hold this down to let that glue adhere to the subfloor. I got a little bit of movement in that pipe that wants to push this thing up. So I'm just using this temporarily until this polyurethane dries. And you can even go around here too if you wanted to to make sure this is really well sealed to the, the plywood. Now the drain's set. Okay, so first thing you want to do is get a good accurate center mark of your of your drain to measure for what to cut the pan. That's six and a quarter, three and an eighth. So that's our center mark. And then we'll be able to measure to the stud. So we've got 30 and a quarter by 30 inches. So that's this is a good scenario of why it's nice to have that pan bigger than your actual 30 by 60 inch size. So we have an overall dimension of 60. Yeah. Overall, we have 60 and a quarter inches making this pan to fit that since we have 61 inches, we'll be able to do that. So just off our back wall, we're going to make the center 30 and a quarter inches to the center and off our back wall is 13 and 5 eighths. We added blue painter's tape to the back of the shower slope so that we'll be able to mark the center 
of the, the, the shower pan. So that's exactly what Steve is doing here. He'll explain why in a second. So 30 and a half to the center, 15 and a half to the center. So that's our sum work. Now we can measure off of that for the back wall. So we're gonna make this side the back wall. So I said 13 and 5 eighths. So basically cutting off an inch and a quarter. Steve is simply notching the pan with a utility knife and using his chalk line to snap the, the line here. You can see he's just measuring to make sure he's got that right. Snapping the line and then using a standard circular saw with a standard framing blade to cut through this foam board. Very easy to do. Just make sure you've got the blade set to the right depth. So that's our back side. So it'll be 30 and a quarter inches from the center. So we're really not cutting too much off here, only about a quarter inch. Okay, then our overall dimension is 60 and a quarter. So before we cut the width, we're going to dry fit this and see how this fits. It must be a little unsquare here. The cut here, I'm going to take a little bit off the front side here. It looks like we just have a little bit of unsquareness on this front wall. So I'm just going to take an eighth of an inch or so. Quarter inch off of that. Okay, so before we go and cut this pan down, we want to determine our curb size. And this is such a small shower, I really didn't want to have a four inch curb. Because our overall dimension of this shower is 31 inches. So if I took four inches out of that, I'd be having like a 27 inch shower inside of here. And I really kind of wanted to maximize the space. So I'm going to actually rip down and cut the curb in half and just have a two inch wide curb versus that four inch just to give myself a, little, a couple more inches so we're gonna go ahead and cut down the curb first and then cut the pan to fit that so this this curb is actually just just completely flat there is no angle on it so it really doesn't matter which side you cut or you don't have to really think of worry about that the only thing i plan on doing is having my cut side on the outside of the shower. I'm gonna seal it with the sealer, but I think it's a good idea just to have the exposed foam on the outside of the shower. We snap the chalk line on the top of the curb to mark the center location, flip the curb over, found the center again, and did the exact same thing with the chalk line. We set our circular saw to the maximum depth and slowly cut along that line on the top side. Then we did the exact same thing on the other side of the curb. Just want to make sure if you're using a circular saw like this, they cut on the same side of the line as you did on the other, because you obviously have the thickness of this blade that would make it off. You always want to have the hard curb. This hard curb is self-sealing. So this is going to be the top of the curb. Nice thing about this is that when you screw it, a shower door into it. The material on here will self seal against the screw. So put the hard curb top on, on the top. I want to maximize the shower, so I'm going to bring this all the way out to 31 inches. I'm actually just going to notch out that drywall. I don't have to cut the pan down. Thirty and three quarter. Thirty and three quarter. So I'm gonna stick with that. 
So in this scenario, my drain is uh, off an inch from center because it's 15 inches here and like 13 and five eighths here. So we are about an inch and a half off of center. That's something I should have counted for when I put my drain. But I think with the type of floor tile that we're gonna put in here, no one's really gonna be able to notice that the drain is an inch off of center. We're centered this way, obviously, it's just width wise. Okay, so we'll wipe down the substrate with a sponge. Get any dust or anything off of there. And keep that subfloor from soaking up the thin set, the moisture out of the thin set. So I'm just gonna use a half inch by half inch trowel just to get this thin set spread and then use the, the trowel that came with it, the three quarter inch. To use a modified thin set to apply this with. Burn it into the substrate with a flat side trial first. In this example, we used Ardex X5 modified thin set. This is perhaps the most important step for the installation of the shower slope pan. So we're gonna show you step by step how much thin set is required for the installation. Get enough thin set on there. And we'll trowel it out with the uh, three quarter inch notch trowel. So you'll tell you have enough thin set on here when you get some nice rounded, nice smooth joints with this trial. Let's see, we gotta get a little bit more space here. So you want to do directional troweling. All your marks going in the same direction. Okay, then we'll go ahead and apply a thick bead of this sealant on this flange. Be fairly generous with this because this is the main seal to the pan system. Okay. Step on it. You can see how all that's oozing out of that flange. That's what you want to see. You want to see all of that sealant really making a good seal against the flange. You want to make sure you're level. Okay, then at this point, you go ahead and put your drain cover in.
Okay, then when you go to tile, you'll just thread this in down to your tile level. What you want to do after you do all the waterproofing is to fill in this void with thin set or a four to one sand mix. I normally recommend after you do the waterproofing to do this maybe the night before so that this is like all nice and firm. A lot of times if I'm in a rush and I need to go ahead and do the tile the next day right after the waterproofing, I'll use a rapid setting thin set to fill this this gap because it'd be tough to fill all of this area with thin set and tile all at the same time. You'd most likely have sinkage of your tile um, into this cavity. So you want to have this kind of firm and hardened before you do that. Okay, so we'll put our curb in and put a generous bead against the bottom edge to our pan. We'll also do the edges, do it here to our sides. I'll actually just put a little bit on here as well and make sure we have a good adhesion to the, the pan. Backflutter in the bottom. it's nice and level because your shower doors are going to be on this so really kind of important to make sure this is level or you're going to have a hard time with your shower doors we'll get rid of all this excess thin set okay, so on this project we're going to use the cement board but no matter what kind of backer board you use you want to put a generous bead of sealant against the bottom where the the panel's gonna rest on to. This just gives you an extra insurance of sealing that edge. Use the proper screws for the backer board. It might be every six to eight inches. Okay, then the excess sealant just wanna spread out. Just smooth that. We'll be addressing that corner with the liquid waterproof at a later point. We don't want that stuff hardening like that. So we're gonna put a niche in here and I need to cut out this stud to be able to get this centered. Always take a look at your framing and make sure that whatever wall that you're cutting into like this isn't load bearing. Because if it is, you need additional framing, kind of like a window. You need to have a header and everything to support that load. In this scenario, we'll be able to cut this out. And really with having this spacing between these two studs here, we'll be fine for cutting out the niche area. Um, but typically I, I kind of, it's really an all of a preference thing. But a lot of my niches, I go between 42 and 48 inches. I kind of, I kind of like the 42 inch. So we're gonna just do a, a wide shelf like this. In some aspects, I find this to be feeling too high at this point, but it's really kind of a preference of where you put it. So I might actually just go 46 inches. This actually comes with a shelf. This is a, yeah, this is a 20 by 12, a 20 by 12 niche inside dimension. But they do have a shelf if you wanted to make two compartments out of it. That's obviously additional work with installing tile. So this is where I want the bottom of my niche to be. And I'm gonna measure down an inch and a half because I wanna put a, a blocker down for the base of this. And it will measure up 21 plus three is 24. So we'll be cutting out this whole, this marker here and this marker here and putting two by four here and there. We used a circular saw to notch out the two by four and then cut out the rest of it using a reciprocating saw. 
and pound it out using a hammer. You can also use an oscillating multi-tool to help you out with this. For the bottom plate, it's a standard two by four. You pound it into place, make sure it's level, then use two three inch decking screws to secure it to the other studs. Get the measurement for the top plate. And again, we're just using a standard two by four here. So you pound that into place, make sure you've got the correct height and that it's level. And again, use two three inch decking screws to secure it to the two by fours. So that's what we did here to get our framing in place. Okay, so this niche is actually four inches. So it's designed to stick out a half an inch for your backer board. So your backer board will rest up against that. So let's see what this center looks like now. Sure, got 13 and a quarter. It's uh, six, and a half, six and five eighths is the center. So that is actually center. I'm gonna pull the niche out and we'll cut the backer board to this, slide this in and make sure that this is nice and even with the front face of the, the backer board. Five and a quarter. 23 and an eighth. And 36 and three eighths. 26 and three eighths. On the backer board, it even says on your sheeting here, that you need an eighth inch spacing between sheets and your corners. So again, we used our cement board screws for this Wonder Board light. Uh, per the pattern that's recommended, we marked the location of the niche using our level here. So that's really important, you wanna get that correct. And then use an angle grinder with a diamond blade to cut through the cement board. This can be dusty, that's why Steve's holding a sponge to the blade while he's doing it. Be careful if you use that technique. Pound that out. And then make sure that the, the niche fits and that it sits flush inside the cement board. So I'm just using some Dorox screws to anchor this in. All right, and it wouldn't be a bad idea to fill any gap with the sealant. This is just preliminary. You'll be, we'll be addressing this whole thing with some mesh and the liquid waterproofing as well. This is just to fill in those gaps. We added the last piece of cement board there, leaving an eighth inch gap between the board and the ceiling as well. And then Steve, what he did there is measured and notched out the cement board for the curb. He's also getting the measurements for the the mixing valve here, which is kind of a unique one, and we'll. Cut that out using, we'll cut those holes using a standard spade bit. He's dry fitting the board, making sure that it fits well, and then applying the polyurethane sealant to the shower slope pan. And then using the same screw pattern that he did for the other boards. So as you can see here, that board fits nice and tight. We're fishing our wires through for this Moen digital mixing valve, which we might have a tutorial on later on. And then smoothing out the polyurethane sealant along the curb and the shower slope. So he's doing the exact same thing here. He's got a snap a chalk line for this, the last piece of cement board on that plumbing wall. He's using a utility knife to score it and cut it. You can also use a carbide knife. They make a special one for cement boards. You don't have to use a utility knife. And then smoothing that out using a rasp. That's really helpful if you want a, a nice smooth cement board cut to meet up with your drywall. Again, determining where the mixing valve pipe location is for the handheld and also the shower head. You want to get the height and the the depth off the wall there and using a spade bit to cut out the holes within the cement board. So again, that's a nice tight fit. We left the eighth inch gap between each board and the ceiling and then using our cement board screws to attach it to the studs. What we did had to do here is notch out 
a little section of our corner bead. We have a metal corner bead that we're using to meet up with the existing drywall. And we're using our cement board screws to attach that metal bead to the cement board and the drywall itself. So uh, we use uh, uh, screws maybe 8 to 12 inches, and then we're just using a flat edge here to ensure that the metal bead isn't popping out anywhere. On the last wall, we're getting our measurement. You just you definitely want to get multiple multiple measurements to ensure that that cement board is going to be the right depth. And then again, using our angle grinder and diamond blade, in this case the CGX115 by Montelli to cut that notch out. We're applying our polyurethane sealant over the curb as well. You definitely want a good bead over the curb and along the shower slope. Embedding the cement board and then using cement board screws to attach it to the studs. So again, for that last panel, we left an eighth inch gap between the ceiling and the board and then successive boards. And then the final step is to clean off the drain and the shower slope using a vacuum or a shop vac. You don't want any dust on top of that. So three things to remember. In our next video, we're gonna show you how to completely waterproof the shower slope system using a liquid waterproofing membrane. We'll put a link to that video right here. For today, if you wanna check out the shower slope, we'll put a link to that down in the description here on YouTube. And then finally, if you are doing a bathroom remodel and you want help with that, Grab our free guide right here. That'll show you how to remodel a bathroom in 10 days or less. It's awesome. And we've got some bonus videos in that guide that'll definitely help you out. Thanks for watching today's video and we will see you in the next one. Take care.